are things we are taught in the books, and there are things we read in your book, and in Jaramogi's book, uh, uh, Not Yet Uhuru, and in Goody Watiolo's books, and in Daniel Branch's uh, Looters and Grabbers, and Kenyans Between Hope and Despair. There's a very big disconnect. There are people we are told are heroes of this country. But if you look at the, the, the real history books, they're not heroes. Is it time we rewrite the history of Kenya? That's my first question. Number two, Baba, what do you think about our generation? What should be our biggest generational goal? Because Jaramogi and, and, and Bildad Kagia and the team fought for colonialism. And they can see. And that day when the world will end, God will ask them what they did in this world. And they will say, we brought... Uh, we, we drove away the colonialists. And Baba will be asked, and his generation, what did you fight for? What, what did you fight for? And Baba will say, I fought for multipartism and devolution. Baba, what do you think this generation, my generation, should focus on? I went to Baba's office one day, and I, want, I, I had a quote, and I want to complete with this quote from Baba's office. It was a quote by Martin Luther King Jr. It motivated me, and I want to read it in this forum today, so that it may, it may motivate you. And it says, and I think it's one of the quotes that motivates Baba, that you may be 38 years old, as I happen to be, and one day, some great opportunity stands before you and calls you to stand up for some great principle, some great issue, some great cause, and you refuse to do it because you are afraid. Continues, you refuse to do it because you want to live longer. You are afraid that you will lose your job, or you are afraid that you will be criticized, or that you will lose your popularity, or shoot, or you are afraid that somebody will stab you or shoot you. Or bomb your house, so you refuse to take the stand. Well, you may go on to live until you are 90, but you are just as dead. Thank you. At 38, as you will be at Thank 90. You. Thank, Thank you so much. David Binoluaj from Nyakati. Thank you. Thank you. Give this uh, lady. Finish. There, there, there. I don't know how the mic will get up there. Comrades Power! Comrades Power! My name is Gitaranga Esther. I am the president of all female students in Kenya. Baba, you've said... <laughs> thank you. Baba, you've said that we have had 60 years of colonial power and we have had 60 years our, under our own government. And there are some people who are really trying to sabotage the steps you are taking as young people. You have held our hand, we as the young women and generally all the youth. And there are people like Chairman Mainajenga who have taken up what you're doing to come and hold our hand, to come and support us. So the moment he's being attacked, the, uh, the attacks come to us. They come to women and they say, Chairman Atembe Nawaschana, ama sisi ni wanaume. It is very unfair, and when they can, they try to sideline us, they try to remove us from the picture, and then they call our young men mungeke. But by the moment they kill our young men under the disguise of mungeke, it means even us as women we will not get husbands, we will not get good fathers. They are talking about alcoholism among Mount Kenya people. When chairman tried to collect these young men back together and give them a vision, a purpose, he's trying trying to dissociate and to destroy these young, this young men. Therefore, an attack on the young men of Mount Kenya is directly an attack to us as women. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let us be upstanding for our national anthem. DJ, our national anthem, as we close. Please. Just hold on, just hold on, just pause, let Baba say something, then we close, please. DJ, just a minute. Hello. Uh, I thought, uh, I thought I would, uh, hello, hello, yeah, I thought it would be probably good to just say a few words only. First, I appreciate the issues that have been raised by those who have had an opportunity to speak on behalf of the others. 
all of them actually point out one thing, that things are not going in the right direction in our country. That Kenya needs some kind of rectification. Project Kenya. Somebody asked about the compensation for the mammals. That is a subject for another day. But I want to say that, you know, throughout the history of our country, there have always been two forces pulling in two opposite directions. And the protest for change and development, the process for retention of the status quo, that those who have been fighting to retain the status quo, even people who are fighting for independence, that those whose intention was basically to remove the colonial system, remove the Zulus, and bring in an, uh, an, uh, uh, an African regime, and use those powers which the colonialists were using to oppress the natives, use it themselves as Africans to lord each other fellow Africans. That's why the grand Zulu went, they said it was only Mauricio or Mengia. They came in, they transplanted the colonial system, and then themselves became the colonizers using the very same system that the, the, the British were using to oppress the African people, they're using it to oppress the African, the full African people. But those who said they wanted to make independence meaningful, people were fighting against colonialism because the colonial system was ruthless, was alien, was dictatorial. They wanted to replace it with a system that was more responsive to their needs. A system that will be more humane. A system that will enable them to realize their dreams. And that's why they are talking about the fundamental rights of the people of Kenya. The right to life. The right to food. The right to shelter. The right to health. The right to education for the fundamental human rights of our people. And if you can guarantee those rights, Kenya can prosper. So we have seen this before the first regime came and went. The second regime came and went. Under the first regime, there was an attempt to allow a people to get into the economy of this country. So a, a kind of a, an African middle class was emerging, but it was still very small. The major part of middle class was still very much alien. The second class that came, the second regime, tried to suppress that emerging Africa, African middle class and create what is called the Comprado bourgeois, Comprado regime. Commission agents, this was simply just to let a commission happen, commission happen, commission happen. It impoverished our people completely. The third regime tried, tried, and there was a clear vision. That's why that regime came up with the vision, vision 2030 which was aimed at removing our people from poverty to a middle income status by the year 2030. And this is a clear vision for the first time. I am happy to be having the part and parcel of calling that vision 2030. <laughs> but after this again, we, we, we lost direction now. The thing became a little bit um, grayish. Gray now we've come back to the dark era, trial and error. Everything goes. You can come here and, and lie, so sell the lie here. He to safanya he, to safanya he, to rajenga he, to safanya he, to safanya he. Everything to safanya to safanya. Kesho he can safanya he dance up, safanya up, 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 up. Huh? All the times, just promises and promises. 
the saying, this gentleman lies all the times and all the times and that is see you in the video. Even if you give them 100 years, they will still just be lying. Nothing will happen under this stupid regime. I thank you very much. Thank you. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you. Now, before the anthem, Tafadali, now I'm to pick Baba Makofi, when you're not far. Sasa ndotu waze Makofi Vizuri. Round of applause for Raila Amolo Odinga. <laughs> Baba, I'll also give my clap. But just before that, I'm very privileged. There's a sensitive part of the history. Baba Mepeana. And I hope Kila Mtu Kwe Hall is privileged to sit with the son of a former vice president. The son he became a minister, an MP, fought for us, and an opposition leader, and the prime minister, of course. And I want to say, he's the pillar of hope. And these are my statements. If God is with us, which I know he is with us, he should be the next president of Kenya. Baba, we are privileged, highly privileged. And thank you for coming. And if you feel the way I do, a song is not bad to sing. What the hell is you looking for? Can I and Lou make money anymore? Shake your feet, baby girl, and I know. Majibaji, Jacquard, and did you have my new about? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Get the hell out of my face, baby.